So look, we've had the Humane AI pin ship finally, and it's been an interesting saga to say the least. I think this is a device that has split opinion, but not in a very good way. There is a few, and I mean a few diehard fans, but for the most part, the opinions range from what is it to this thing is terrible. So let's introduce the AI pin first to those of you who haven't heard of it first. Here is the founder introducing it slightly. Built from the ground up for AI. It comes in three colorways. Got Eclipse, Lunar, and Equinox. So that's the hardware itself. And essentially it's a pin that magnetically attaches to your, your chest here on whatever you're wearing and is voice activated and works with AI. Obviously, because of ChatGPT and AI going into the forefront, uh, we're seeing a lot of people now designing AI-specific hardware. Be great if they could make one that could keep me cool, or maybe there's an air conditioner for that already, because it is literally 40 degrees outside, which means I am disgusting. I just thought I'd let you in on that. But anyway, back to the AI debate. The thing about this new pin is essentially the the overarching idea was quite simple to build an ai assistant that would be clipped to your pin thingy your lapel just somewhere around here essentially magnetically and would allow you to access all of your information through ai and they spoke from the very beginning that it would be a replacement for your smartphone now that the reviews are out saying it is nowhere near that, they're now saying it was never meant to be a replacement for the smartphone. But we'll get to the messaging and where I think this has all fallen apart a little bit later. But there is a few hilarious points to this hardware that just makes me think it was nowhere near ready to be shipped and that they were kind of forced to ship at this point now um, just because they had set that deadline. So let me just get into a few of the issues with this and then I'll give my thoughts on it as a whole because it is a truly terrible product for a variety of reasons, but I can see why some people do see it as a glimpse of the future that we're just nowhere near yet. Let's start with the battery. The battery is, well, it's terrible and let, let me explain why, but let me just play this clip first. The battery booster powers a smaller battery inside the main computer. And this is how we achieve our all day battery life. So if you ever exhaust the booster, you just reach into your pocket or bag and hot swap it. This is a perpetual power system that allows you to use your AI pin for as long as you want. But then speaking of battery life, really bad <laughs> and, and inconsistent, which is annoying. So the problem with this is, first of all, the messaging. As you can probably tell by that, the company initially tried to go all out Apple. Um, in terms of design, everything, they just went all out Apple, which is a flaw in itself because you really need to create your own identity as a startup, especially when you're a startup that's got $250 million worth of investment so far. Uh, but on top of that, you're setting expectations that you're just not going to be able to deliver on, which is a terrible idea. So they came up with this perpetual battery system. And can just the, before I even get into what Marquez said there about it being inconsistent and not lasting very long, the perpetual battery system is not a perpetual battery system in any more than having a double A battery is a perpetual battery system. Essentially, the way they're phrasing this is, is odd. So I guess... My argument would be this is just hot swapping batteries in and out, right? Which is what you can do with a drone or a camera. You could do it with a disposable camera in the past with a double A battery, for example. That's their perpetual battery system. Now, their argument will be that you're hot swapping it onto a device that has a battery already. But that is not really perpetual because even, you know, even the hot swap batteries you're putting in aren't perpetual. You have to charge them up as well. So it's just a silly name, first of all, but that's beside the point. I, I get it. It's marketing speak. It's, it's okay. 
the bigger problem is that these battery boosters that you connect to the main pin itself seem inconsistent according to all of the reviews. So essentially it looks like because of the way this thing works and doesn't have a screen and you're just talking to it and there's a laser adapter that needs to kind of, we'll get onto that in a few, but basically there is a, a laser that comes out onto your hand Basically, there's been situations that these reviewers have talked about where the battery has lasted two to three hours when they're doing nothing, and then six or seven hours when they're doing lots of things, and it's really inconsistent, and you have to ask the AI itself for the battery charge level, and there's no real way of knowing whether it's going to drain faster or slower. You're just having to guess with this, which is really disconcerting for something that is trying to be used as a phone because one of the core issues with this device is it doesn't connect to any other device it doesn't connect to your phone so this is a smartphone replacement now i'm going to get onto that in a minute properly and why i think this thing is such a, a failure from the offset but these are the kind of things that aren't going to work without a screen sure it has a laser projector but they're just not going to work without you constantly knowing where the battery level is at. And having to speak to it is a problem. So if you can't provide something that is absolutely and actually all day battery life, then not having a screen is a real issue for battery management. But I think the bigger issue than that, before I get into my actual full on thoughts over all of this, is the speed. Because this was always going to be a problem. And what annoys me the most about this is how they tried to mask it. And the marketing, once again, really dug its own grave here. It really did. We don't do apps. These AIs are streamed on demand at the speed of thought. When is the next Nets game? Finding next Nets game. The next Brooklyn Nets game is on Sunday, April 14th, but no specific opponent or location is provided. I just Googled it. It says it's the 76ers, so that's kind of weird. What's the traffic to the Empire State Building from here? Finding directions. Use the voice command feature of AI pin to ask for traffic information to the Empire State Building, and it will provide you with the details you need. I did. Call Aaron. Is it? Oh, there you go. So I added that 56k sound for effect, but you get the point there. This thing is incredibly slow. And that is not something that Humane is going to be able to fix. But before I get onto that, the fact that Imran quoted it as it gives you answers at the speed of thought, that is the kind of marketing expectation that is all just, it literally sums up why this company has gone so wrong and why this is such a failure. You sell something as the speed of thought and then the actual speed is 10 seconds on a good internet connection. Whose thought are you rating that as? Because that tells me that maybe, maybe it is speed of thought, and maybe the speed of thought that they're measuring is the thought of the marketing and strategy department at Humane. It's absolutely terrible, and it's only going to get worse when it's on a T-Mobile virtual network, essentially, when you're out and about, and it's only going to get worse when you're in anything other than prime Wi-Fi. This, in all of the reviews, has been slow on prime Wi-Fi and even more so outside. And here's one of the fundamental issues with this. One of the fundamental problems with this entire device is that it's not running AI locally because... At the moment, at the very least, running an AI locally is impossible. You need to connect to large language models, large action models, and so on. So this is going to have to root. And 
to break it down simply, the way this thing works is they have their Cosmos uh, operating system, and that then reroutes to a bunch of other AI systems. Presumably, ChatGPT is one of them, given that Sam Altman has directly invested in this company. But I'm sure there's others like Perplexity AI and so on, given what this thing is able to do. And then it has to connect to Tidal and other services as well. The problem with that is if you're just getting the time, for example, it can do that locally on the device with its own operating system. But as soon as it has to go to ChatGPT, its own system has to send up to its own server to figure out what the request is, then where to route that. And that could go through four or five different layers of routing, which means that no matter how quick the connection is, that is always going to be slower than just pulling your phone out and doing it on your phone. And that was throughout the Marquez Brownlee review. We saw this. It was just incredibly slow throughout. And that's just not something they're going to be able to fix unless they can get the OS on board. The problem with that is that in reality, it's going to be four or five years down the line. So unless AI gets much quicker, much sooner than that, that could be a real stumbling block for humane because this thing is supposed to be your human assistant basically clipped you at all times and that is the only way this replaces the smartphone and that's just not fixable anytime soon sure sam altman has in invested in this company but that doesn't mean they're going to get some sort of automatic preference to get server access to make chat gpt on the ai pin quicker than chat gpt is on ChatGPT. So there's a fundamental flaw that this just isn't anywhere near ready for the world yet because it's going to be slow. And at least when you have a screen in front of you, you kind of, you know that it's doing something. Whereas with this, because there's no sound, it makes it just annoying because you're just waiting in silence awkwardly for a response. And if they add some sort of sound, then it's surely just going to get frustrating because you're supposed to use this thing in public as well. So what are you going to do? Add, add elevator music to this? It's just without that speed, it doesn't work. On top of that, they pitched this as if it had some sort of private audio that only you could hear. But it seems like the only way to actually have that private audio where no one else can hear your conversations is to have your headphones. And even then, if you're texting someone, you're going to have to read the text out for it to write that down. So there is no real privacy. Now, you could use the laser projector that is built in, but one, you're not going to be able to see that in daylight. And two, that is going to take an eternity to do anything on because it uses hand gestures to do all of these simple things. Laser projected screens are not new. They've been around for a while and you could build one with parts you could find online. Not, I'm not saying that it would be as slickly designed as this little thing here, but the point is that hardware has been around for a while and there is good reason as to why no one else is using it. So I think there is just inherent unfixable problems with this device. And I think it comes down to three issues. One is that they initially sold this as a smartphone replacement. And they're building everything as if it's going to be a smartphone replacement. Now, once the reviews came out, they very quickly walked back on that and are now saying that it's not supposed to be a smartphone replacement. But if it's not a smartphone replacement, then why does it need to work on its own? Why does it have its own subscription? And why does it cost as much as a smartphone? If none of those things are necessary, then just connect it to a smartphone and make it an easy way for you not to have to pull your smartphone out. That would solve basically every issue that this thing has and would also mean that it could be cheaper going forward because it wouldn't need its own antennas, and a lot of those issues would be taken off. As well, you could probably fix a lot of the heat management because you could do a lot of the processing on the phone. It would just make the entire thing a lot better. It overheats at the moment because, obviously, you're trying to fit compute into such a small device. And then on top of that, 
you're just doing a lot of processing in something that's sitting in the sun. If you're out on your body, it's just going to be a heat nightmare. And in the Engadget review, as well as the Verge review, they talked about how it shut down quite a lot because of overheating. So there's some clear issues there. The second problem with this is I just think that it's clear that this device wasn't built for the ground up to do what it does right now. The reason I'm pretty confident in saying that is because they did in their 2021 pitch deck pitch this as an AI device. And that's probably because they got Sam Altman's investment around that time. They knew kind of where ChatGPT was going. They would have had some inkling that that was the direction that they could take this. And that's when they got around a hundred to $250 million worth of investment. But they were building this since 2018. They've messaged on their Twitter that they started working on the projector and some of the other pieces of this in 2018. And that is long before LLMs were a thing. So the point here is that they started building this long before they knew that this particular use case for it as a kind of AI in a box system would have been possible. Instead, they were very much focused on the camera. They were focused on it being aware of its surroundings and being some sort of AI, but I would imagine closer to something like Siri, a small assistant that would take some time, uh, you know, off your hands by allowing you to take notes. Basically, what I'm assuming is they were thinking this would be some sort of Alexa that you could make phone calls on with a camera. Essentially what it is now, but nowhere near as powerful as this would be when it works, which it apparently rarely does. The point here is they've clearly pivoted to fit. And I think that's probably why this is shipped completely unfinished, because clearly they were taking investments since 2018, building up this thing around a device design and a UI design with the screen and, and with the cameras and so on that Imran had came up with and then shoehorned ChatGPT and perplexity into it. That's what it seems like to me. I'm not against companies pivoting, but it has to be pivoted correctly. And this very much seems like we're running out of time. We've got this investment. We need to get a return on it. We're now taking Series B. Oh, look, ChatGPT is there. That'll do. Shoehorn it in. Let's get that thing out. because. There surely can't be anyone at this company who used this on a day-to-day -day basis who thought this thing was ready to go out. And if there is a group of people in the company who make decisions who think this thing was ready to go out, then those people should be fired because clearly it's not ready. So it's either gross incompetence or pressure because they started in 2018, had to pivot, and now we're under pressure to get this thing out there. And, and that leads on to the final point of the reason why I just do not get this humane AI pin and why I do not think it should be out there at all. They're talking about this in a way to say, look, you know, the iPhone, original iPhone wasn't spectacular when it came out. It didn't have apps and so on. And they keep trying to push this towards the iPhone. And then, you know, a lot of people who are fans of this are now saying, well, you know, look at the Vision Pro, that's overpriced and it doesn't do everything perfectly and so on. The problem is they are missing a key fundamental point of shipping anything innovative. Every time an innovative solution comes out, it does something or a variety of things far better than the thing it's trying to replace or far better than anything else. The iPhone did three things incredibly well. You could browse the internet. It was a phone, obviously, but you could browse the internet and listen to music on an interactive, easy to use screen that made it more functional than any other phone at the time. Could it do everything that other phones could? No, but it did a specific amount of things much better than any other smartphone, which meant that even though unlike Android, which was hot on the heels, it was already out technically, but you know what I mean, um, had apps and so on, and it was slow to that game, 
All of those things were forgiven because the UI was incredible and it was much better than any other phone on the market at the time. You could browse the web, listen to music and use your phone far easier than any other smartphone. The touch keyboard was better. The whole interface was better. And therefore it had gained that trust and time to build up. The AI pin doesn't do anything better than a smartphone at the moment, other than allow you to have the voice here instead of here on ChatGPT. The Vision Pro, for example, is what has been touted. But again, the Vision Pro 1 was marketed at a specific set of early developers and early adopters who just wanted it, but primarily at developers. It was essentially a developer kit. That's why it was so highly priced. And it was also a show of hardware. The Humane AI pin has been seen as that show of hardware. That's the excuse for it, for example. But again, the difference is when we look at the Vision uh, Pro, it, sure, it doesn't do a lot of things well, but there are a couple of things like the theater that it does absolutely spectacularly and the user interface is spectacular and it works. So even though it doesn't do a lot of things and it's highly priced, it's a clear vision, excuse the pun, of what is to come. Whereas the AI pin doesn't have any app or anything that makes me go, I, I really need to use this right now. What they have done is said, wouldn't it be cool if you could have an AI assistant just near you at any point with a voice that you could talk to, get instant feedback at the speed of thought with an all day battery? Wouldn't that be amazing? And I'm thinking, yes. That would be amazing. And Apple or Google should really build that into a watch that connects to their phone that would work perfectly and charge me two, three hundred dollars for it. And Humane has gone crap. So yeah, not not a good look from them. 